Hi, I'm your host, Megalon Jones, and welcome back to the Sandbox of Syria for more combat mission Shock Force 2. This is the single player scenario that shipped with the game De Hinterlag, in which a mechanized Dutch platoon finds itself under ambush, and we are tasked with sending a relief force to save them and neutralize the Syrian threat. So you can see in the center left, you see the position of the first platoon that was ambushed. They've lost a IFV. They have one IFV that is still operational and one that is operational but is immobile. And the survivors are holed up in a building. After saving first platoon, I'm then tasked with driving down the highway and taking up a couple other objectives. Now, the terrain itself is split in two. On the left side of the map, we have a sparse, uh, sparse buildings, a lot of open spaces. And... The first platoon, which has been ambushed, is currently in very good cover, but they are exposed. I know that seems like a contradiction, but what that means is they can take fire from a lot of different angles, but they are in stone buildings, which should mitigate that until I'm able to bring my firepower to bear. Plan being, I'm sending the relief platoon up right behind the first platoon, have them infiltrate forward, identify whatever it is that's going on in front of me, and then try to take the two objectives. Under no circumstances am I going to fight in the town. That's the area in the red box. Uh, I don't have the troops, I don't have the firepower or the time to really go street by street, house to house. There's too many walls, too many modular buildings, too many blind alleyways that are just great for ambushes and that will just chew me right up. The other thing I got to keep track of is the secure highway location which is a walled compound. In the first turn we make a ton of spots, including armored bunkers. These are going to be problematic, although they can be suppressed by the 30 millimeters from the IFVs. There's also a bunch of infantry compound, or excuse me, infantry contacts that are taken care of awfully quickly by the rapid fires from the IFVs. And under this fire, the second platoon makes its way without any type of casualties or any catastrophes happening. They come up, unload their infantry, and begin to move forward. At the same time, I've got an airstrike. I've been handed a couple assets, a single Apache helicopter and two tubes of 81 millimeter mortars. This Syrian heavy machine gun crew is extraordinarily lucky. If they had stuck around another five seconds, they would have gotten a Zuni rocket salvo. There are tons of RPGs being spotted, and these things are really dangerous, especially to the 2nd Platoon's YPR armored personnel carriers. In addition, the Syrians have got those Soviet automatic grenade launchers set up in advantageous positions.
While the infantry is being dropped off, a pair of the YPRs are chopped off to go to the right hand flank in order to provide security. I don't want anything unexpected coming out of that slum area, the urban area to the right. Once disembarked, 2nd Platoon infiltrates its way forward and makes contact with 1st Platoon. And at that point, both platoons start sending fire teams forward in order to make better spotting contacts of the opposition. Thirty millimeter grenade launcher is a real headache. It is able to suppress my troops behind the walls and it does some damage here to the optics of this uh, Gustav IFV, leaving me with one real optional uh, 30 millimeter armed infantry fighting vehicle. So here we see the position at 1335. Plan is to continue helo airstrikes on the highway objective while dropping 81 millimeter mortars on the town objective. Both of those I've spotted uh, heavy weapons teams on the roofs. The next few minutes are essentially a sniper duel. I kept this, uh, this, these shots in to show you kind of what I was dealing with my, with my old computer rig, especially here. We're in um, what could be a slideshow. Uh, I'm currently operating on a brand new gaming PC, so the next videos are not going to be like this. The YPRs advance very cautiously. Essentially, these are old M113 armored personnel carriers with 20 millimeter cannons stuck to the top of them. So they have almost zero protection against heavy weapons, RPGs, heavy machine guns. You got to keep them in cover. The airstrikes continue against the highway outpost. Uh, they're pretty much just chucking rockets into that entire compound, and this goes on for about five, 10 minutes. One of the nice things is it starts knocking down the walls, which allows me entrance into the compound. While this is going on, the 81 millimeter mortars start falling. Uh, one of the perks of this scenario is I don't have any prohibition against using heavy weapons into built up urban areas, which is kind of a normal thing for sh shock force. They want to keep civilian casualties to a minimum, but I am not handicapped in that way during this scenario.
I make a mistake here. I push a uh, squad across the street to take up a better position, and this is at the point where the ambush took place before the scenario begins. As you can see, this squad ran right into a minefield. Bad news for them. They are now caught out in the open, caught into a minefield. But as it turns out, the uh, superior training and morale of the NATO troops really comes through here. And with the cover of the uh, mortar barrage, they're able to get their act together, get across the street, and not suffer any more casualties, at least until they get into this building where they get heavily engaged. With all this trauma, this squad here is pretty much out of the fight for good. They've been shaken and have taken too many casualties. Meanwhile, back at the highway compound, the Syrian infantry is starting to bug out, which gives me lots of targets of opportunity. Both the YPRs and the helicopters basically have a turkey shoot of panicky Syrians. With the Syrians in disarray and running away, it's now time to make good my plan. I'm going to send 2nd Platoon up around the left flank, seize the highway, and then start looking at taking this lump of buildings in the center right, which will give me a firepower position to go into the town objective. The whole thing starts rolling and things start to go bad immediately. A YPR runs over a mine throwing a track, which means that the infantry is now going to have to leg it across open ground. Everything has to go right here because I really don't have any forces to spare. Taking large amounts of casualties, taking the highway objective means I'm pretty much out of the fight.
my surprise, this, the Dutch infantry don't take any casualties making the break-in. They go about their business uh, pretty much like Terminators, just zapping whatever Syrians they come across, going from room to room. make another bad mistake here by exposing a fire team to uh, a Syrian heavy machine gun bunker. By taking the highway position, I'm opening up avenues of fire towards uh, new targets and a lot more Syrian infantry starts to come into view. This is a valiant attempt at wiping out that bunker, but the grenades aren't gonna do the job and it takes uh, the remaining ammunition from one of the Gustav infantry fighting vehicles to force the crew to abandon. With that bunker taken care of, I now start to really put the firepower on to the city area. Another machine gun bunker, this time uh, near the town objective is spotted and I call in artillery in order to soften up the positions for my assault. Uh, taking stock of the situation here, looking from the highway, it's clear that there are a lot more enemies that need to be rooted out. The town objective is within reach, but we've got some major problems, notably the bunker right there. And there are a few more Syrian assets that are giving me pause. Uh, Lots of hidden infantry. There's a BTR roaming around. Shouldn't be problematic. But when you start adding up the lack of uh, available entrances into the objective, I come up with essentially one building where I can really get in, grab a toehold, and try to take the objective. So, with time running out, I roll out 2nd Platoon, dismount my infantry, use my final smoke grenades to try to offer some protection from the machine gun bunker in order to get the infantry across the street. First squad makes it across no problem. The second squad is still forming up when unfortunately the smoke starts to dissipate. Which leaves me with another problem. I've got one squad across the street 
becoming engaged with the Syrians in the town objective and another squad trying to make its way across a now open killing field. Luckily, I only take two casualties. I think one dead and one seriously wounded here. It looks worse than it is, but we can't get across to reinforce the squad that made it across the street to begin with. first squad in the buildings comes under heavy attack with lots of Syrians first charging at them and then running away. Um, they are also being uh, fired upon from their rear and with all this going on I decide to call a ceasefire giving me the silver medal. It's not a total victory but it's good enough. I lost seven men Wounded, five killed, I believe. Um, I kept my own casualties down, which gave me the edge. Um, there's still a lot of operating Syrians. And I think I made the correct decision here. I just didn't have the time or the resources to take the final objective. As you can see, we've, you can see here that I made the correct decision not going into that town at all. Uh, that would have just been a slog. And yeah, there we have it. Um, next scenario uh, is going to be a multiplayer back to World War I. We're going back to Italy. Uh, I'm fighting Irish again for a rematch. I've got my current new rig up and running. The frame rates are great, and I can't wait to see you guys on the other side. Take it easy. within the uncharted depths of waters surrounding a group of islands off the 50th parallel lies man's most formidable challenge. The awesome awakening of prehistoric monsters long thought extinct. Savage and deadly, their one hope is to rule our planet as they once had thousands of years back. Giant against giant. The ultimate battle. Godzilla versus Megalon. Science was baffled and powerless. A terror-stricken humanity knew that it was on the brink of total destruction. A once proud civilization now had to place its trust and hope in Godzilla and his powerful ally, Robot Man. In concert, they would fight this evil in a duel to the death. Battling by day, battling by night, it was more than a race against time. This war was an all-out effort whose ultimate purpose was to save our planet from total destruction. Now came the moment of truth. The ultimate battle. Titan against Titan. Giant against giant in the most spectacular battle yet. You'll see it all in Godzilla versus Megalon.